Hey everyone, welcome to ADV Moto. We've got an awesome interview today with Nathan Rafferty, who will be contending in the upcoming Dakar as one of only about seven U.S. riders. Um, and uh, what we want to do is try to learn a little bit more about the man himself and start out with some questions. How are you doing today, Nathan? Good, Carl. Thanks for having me here. I don't know, problem. It's always a pleasure. Um, so just to kick off, really want to find <coughs> out more about when and how you started riding, and was there any, like, aha moments when you kind of realized that you loved motorcycling? You know, I had I probably had my aha moment before I got my first bike, and, you know, I probably have a non-traditional motorcycle background. I started watching... Uh, long way around with Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman and uh, you know that was I don't know 20 years ago and uh, I don't know how I stumbled on that but two or three episodes in I thought that that is for me I got to do that and uh, I bought a 2000 what year? I don't even know what it was uh, the 650 Dakar the BMW 650 oh, yeah. Dakar oh, and yeah. so I did kind of start backwards where I started dual sport riding before I started true dirt off-road stuff. Did that for a couple of years and uh, just realized it was so much fun, but had other places I wanted to explore and that big heavy bike wasn't going to get me there and got a 450 KTM and one thing led to another, a couple desert races and then, um, you know, some kind of homegrown rally stuff and... Mm, progress from there and here I am about to go to Dakar in about a month and a half or so. Well that's amazing. Was there any um, individual or kind of community that really helped you through this or? Yeah you know <clears throat> um, a couple of folks I, I went and did a, a dual sport ride for my 40th birthday in Morocco and uh, a couple guys there uh, Tim Skilton and Edo Mossi. Edo who now who used to run the Merzuga rally and then works with the Dakar organization now. Um, we talked to them while we were doing this dual sport ride and got us kind of interested in rally and ended up going over there and doing my first real big rally in Merzuga. Uh, have been back several times since then and uh, kind of helped me along that way. Oh, well, that's great. That's great. So can you tell us about your road to kind of rally racing in terms of like, um, why did you decide to do the race in Africa and um, uh, were you in any other competitions before that or around that? Yeah, so I did Africa Eco Race last year, and I guess that's one of two of these kind of grand tour rally races that are two weeks long and mm. three or 4,000 miles long. The Africa Race last year was 12 stages and 4,000 miles. Um, you know, I like so many people, I grew up watching the Dakar Rally on, on TV, and you know, would watch that and just think that is the coolest thing ever. But it never quite entered my brain that I could go and do something like that. <clears throat> yeah. You start out with these smaller rallies. Uh, a lot of them are overseas, but there's Baja Rally that's close by, Sonora Rally also in Mexico. Um, we have some homegrown stuff near where I live in Utah that's mostly just a bunch of guys getting together, but we're running rally road books and less competitive, but... Um, just a bunch of guys getting together, having fun, and it really gives you a flavor for the big stuff. And then the Africa race was just more accessible to me, cost less, uh, less competitive, less hoopla with all the media and all that stuff. And for me, it was really important to do what I felt was the authentic, you know, to me, the Paris to the car rally is in Africa. Right. And so this was the original route. And there's something about Africa that is super authentic and really hard. Mm. because you're in Africa yeah. and uh, when you know when you people when you feel like you're really out in the middle of nowhere in Mauritania you're really out in the middle in of nowhere, nowhere. In so it was an awesome experience and had a good result and uh, finished ha happy and healthy and met a bunch of cool people and so it was awesome and then I did that and thought to myself well I really don't need to do Dakar now I've knocked off one of these big ones but you know how it goes, and a couple of weeks later, you're like, ah, you're hooked. oh, maybe, one more, <laughs> You're hooked. and here I am. So Wow. Yeah, you know, um, one, one of the things that we see a lot of um, in some of the uh, rally videos is the sense of camaraderie Yeah. Uh, amongst the competitors um, really seems to be uh, unique yep. uh, to any other type of racing. I mean, did you get that sense in terms of just the closeness of the bonds? And yeah, 100%. Um, you know, you really do bond with people on these things. You're going to war for 12 days, and it's, you know, you and the motorcycle against the desert, and everybody that comes along, you know, is we all help each other get to the finish line. 
what are some of the key steps to prepare yourself um, to enter the Dakar? And there are a lot of people out there, we've heard this from a lot of people, which is how much does it cost? I mean, roughly, yeah. you know, I, I mean, if someone wants to get themselves kitted out, a uh, bike, um, and just, and you know, not talking about stuff, stuff that you may do for your own training and all those other personal expenses, but just yeah. in terms of the, the entry and getting into Dakar, shipping bikes or something like that, what's someone looking at as a, as a rough cost? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it is not cheap. It's about the Dakar rally, in my experience, is, is about twice as much as the Africa race. And I'm going with a great team from Holland called Bass Trucks, um, this Belden Motorsports out of Holland. But all in, uh, it's about $75,000, and that includes hmm. bike rental, all your service, the fees to the Dakar Rally Race Organization, I mean, tires and extra parts. And so, I mean, that's kind of an all in number. And then there's all the stuff training on your own and all that business. But it, it's certainly not cheap, but you, you know, the way I'm looking at it is I'm going to do this maybe once, hopefully once, uh, and, uh, and have a good result. And you want to do whatever you can to reduce that, um, that margin of error or that, that area where something could go wrong. And if you pick a great team like this that prepares the bikes, uh, make sure, you know, just reduces the stress on the rider. Yeah. You have enough stress over 10 days and 3,000 miles. You want to be able to know your bike is in great working condition, have a team that has been through this a ton of times, mm. doesn't have any questions like, what do I need to do to sign up for the event and what insurance you get and all this stuff. These guys have been through uh, this a million times and have made it really easy for me because there's a lot to stress about. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. So how does that work then if you're, if you're getting a bike, and this is something I've always been wondering about, if you're going to go there and ride a bike that you haven't ridden. How do you, yeah, how well, do you prep for that? I mean, I mean that's, that's, uh, that's the hard part of being an amateur like I am. I mean, if you're one of these pro guys, you fly over to Morocco and have training sessions yeah. or uh, Husky or KTM will send you a brand new 2019 rally replica bike that you get to train on. I don't have that luxury. So the first time I'm going to see this bike will be a couple days before I oh, take it into Peru. I will have 3,000 miles to get used to it. So I think, right, right. you know, it, it, and, and the same thing happened to me in Africa too. You know, I was on a older model rally replica 2015 and it worked out great. You know, uh, um, it takes a little while to get used to it, but you get used to it pretty quickly. And, and I'm not competing on the top end where seconds or even minutes matter probably for me, but, um, um, you know, my main goal is to stay safe and get a good result if finish. I can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really finishing is the dream in a lot of these Big time. things. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So, you know, rally racing is still not extremely popular in the U.S., uh, you know, but you have found some support from, yeah. from some folks here. I mean, yeah, who, absolutely. Who's, uh, who's kind of stepped up to the plate there? So, uh, obviously, uh, guys at home, Edge Power Sports has been awesome. They're our local KTM dealer, and I know the uh, guy that manages that operation, uh, He's been awesome. And then I've found some other sponsors along the way. Uh, a lot of gear stuff. Uh, obviously, Fox um, CD has provided boots. Uh, yeah. Motor X uh, with oil. Um, Pro Bar is a local Utah company that does some nutrition stuff. Uh, Buff has been great. They make the neck tubes and helping me with a oh, fundraiser cool. that I'm doing for a, for a charity that I'm a big fan of. Uh, so I've been really fortunate to have a bunch of great sponsors and, and just help me along. That's way. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And um, kind of trying to wrap it up. Uh, do you have any advice or words of encouragement for folks that are interested in rally racing? You know, uh, I just say, you know, stop watching it on TV and sign up and, and go do it. Uh, you know, I mean, it's as simple as being able to go and order or put on your bike a, a rally road book uh, holder and you can make your own um routes you can go to one of these homegrown events that we have in utah or wyoming um, and then uh, go to a school um, you know i know baja rally and and through some of your resources can point you towards a a weekend where you can get a taste for this navigation and riding and the camaraderie is awesome and uh, um, i've gone with my son a couple times to some of these events and it's just a fun bonding experience so i would just say figure it out and make it happen. Well, right on. Well, Turret, uh, we will be posting updates uh, of Nathan's progress for
for the upcoming Dakar uh, on AdventureMotorcycle.com. But thanks very much for coming out, Nathan. Thanks. And we will be following you very closely and uh, definitely putting on the uh, cheerleading hats for you guys. Thanks, that's, and thanks for awesome. your support, too. You guys have been awesome helping me along the way. I appreciate oh, no it. No problem. You know, we love rally racing, uh, and, uh, and we do believe that uh, either in the U.S. or overseas that it is a true adventure. And um, the effort and determination it takes to even compete, much less finish one, is... Uh, a story worth telling. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. Take care, guys.